From port cities like Odessa to the capital in Kyiv, Ukrainian civilians are defending their homeland. With us, to, with us tonight, Sergei Stakovsky. He is the professional Ukrainian tennis player who famously beat Roger Federer at Wimbledon. Now he's in Kyiv, preparing to defend his country. I'm so glad you're with us tonight. Thank you. How surreal is all of this? Your birthplace is now a war zone, and you're one of the people defending it. Well, I would never imagine in my life that uh, this would come to this, that I would have to be in Ukraine, uh, in Kiev, uh, wearing a bulletproof vest, uh, riding uh, with a assault rifle, and, you know, all of this is incredible. What kind of training what? and preparation have you participated in? Almost none. Uh, although I had a, a short master class on how to use the end law uh, rocket launcher, I would say that's the most I get these days. Wow. And what's it like right now in Kyiv? Have you heard shelling in the um, last 24 the, hours? Well, today I spent the night first time with my father and my brother uh, in our house, which is on the outskirts of Kyiv. And uh, pretty much all night shelling, uh, even some incoming into our direction as well. Um, not very, I would say, quiet place to be. Your father and your brother plan to fight as well. Have you seen any combat so far? I haven't seen any combat because Russian troops are not capable of entering uh, Kiev. Uh, my father and my brother, they are medics. So they are, they're working in a hospital on a daily basis. They treat people, they help people. Uh, so I hope they will not have to fight. You were actually on vacation when the invasion first started. What was that like? How did you get your family to safety and make the decision to return and take the position that you have? Um, it's tough when you wake up in the morning to the news that the war started, especially when at that time my mother was also here and my, my brother's uh, family was here with the kids. Um, I didn't sleep much while well, I was in Dubai at that time with the kids and, and my wife. Uh, they had a school break, so we decided to take them for a holiday. Actually, I left Kiev just five days short before the start of the war. Um, it's, it's a decision which I uh, didn't take light, and I'm not sure that it was the right decision. But for me, there was no right decision. Um, even if I would stay home and, and all of this would continue and, God forbid, Ukraine would fall, I would, uh, I would have guilt uh, on myself over the life. Because you know, if there's something I could do, if, if there's anything I could do to to help Ukrainians, uh, to help my country to survive, because this is not uh, the war where the, it's the war where the Ukraine is going to exist or not exist. In Kyiv right now, is, do you have food? Do you have all the provisions you need? What is it like there? Ukraine is absolutely fine for now, but the slow, small suburbs where the Russian troops are standing, like uh, Bucha and Irpin, is, is a humanitarian catastrophe because uh, the Russian troops are not allowing their uh, volunteers to come in and bring uh, food and water. They don't allow the people to leave. Uh, there is some corridors which sometimes work, sometimes doesn't. So that's the main issue that the civilians are the one who are targeted these days and it doesn't matter whether it's kiev kharkiv or mariupol they don't care whether it's a civilian or, or army they just uh, bombard uh, civilian quarters they they killed civilians with assault rifles i mean it's it's a barbaric war honestly your mother your wife your children they're not with you what are you telling them when you speak to them on the phone that's the hardest part that, you know, it will be over soon and I'm going to come back, hopefully. Do you believe it will be over soon? I very much hope so. I know you said you've heard from Russian tennis players. What have they said to you? Well, that they're, they're very sorry for what's happening, that they were never wanted any part of this and they never, you know, Never supported this. What else can they say? Are you afraid? How do you feel? Um, I think the fear is something that, you know, it's, it's there from the start, but then slowly it's getting numb. But uh, yes, every day when you hear the sirens, I mean, there is the feeling of uncertainty. So how are you spending your days? Just waiting? 
today my was my first night off so i actually didn't have a night shift so i tried to sleep but uh 4 a.m uh, alarm clock woke me up the shelling was coming in and coming out so didn't sleep i would say i would sleep better in the city center sorry but thank normally you. it's a yeah sorry it's a two hour two hour shift six hour rest and in between we're trying to to move around the city to get the people out to help them to to move out uh for the for the kids and and women who are still trying to get out of the Kiev, uh, and then we bring in some you know, water, shelter, food to where it's needed. So, for those women and children who are trying to get out of Kiev, do you think it's safe for them to go now? Or it's mm, too yes, late? the Kiev is not circled. Uh, no, the Kiev is not circled. There's plenty of routes to get out. Uh, Russians cannot get a uh, get around Kiev. Uh, they're getting, I would say, for. Uh, killed uh, in the process of doing that. So there's plenty of routes to leave. Uh, and I think that majority of the people who wanted to leave, they already left. And I mean, Kiev, only people who are willing to stay, stayed. What do you want us to know? We're on the other side of the world. What do you want us to know about the situation there? I would like you to know that they are bombarding from the air civilians, uh, killing children, um, attacking hospitals. And we really need uh, the world to help us to blow the sky above us. Once that is done, I am very sure that Ukraine will resist on the ground. But if this will continue, there'll be too many casualties. The, the, the price of this will be too high, very high. It is high already, but it will be even higher. Sergey, thank you for joining us this evening. I hope to speak with you again next week. Please stay safe where you are.